The bright side of addiction is recovery, and recovery is its own best reward. <laughs> If you're in recovery or know or love someone who is, or you simply want to know more about the recovery process, or maybe you're a bit concerned about someone you know or love who is harmfully using alcohol or any other drug, well, this is the podcast for you as we carry the message of hope and the promise of recovery. And a reminder, you can find all of our podcasts at recoverycoasttocoast.org. Recent episodes have featured historic interviews with Betty Ford, actor John Laura Kett, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, musician Bonnie Raitt, authors Brene Brown, Anne Lamott, J.A. Jantz, former NFL player Ryan Leaf, and Thomas Hollywood Henderson. All these interviews and more are on our website, so take a listen if you would. We also have conversations with everyday people in long-term recovery, sharing their story, their insight, and their path. We are going to take a dip into the audio archive today and share an interview that I did with a guy who won the greatest fight of his life, a former heavyweight boxer who was in the ring with some of the greatest names in boxing history, including George Foreman, Ken Norton, Larry Holmes, and more. Here is a quick clip from today's podcast. Well, you know, it's really funny, but in 1981, I fought a guy by the name of Kenny Norton in Madison Square Garden, sure. and I knocked him out in 54 seconds in the first round, and that night was the first time I thought I had arrived, and I felt like I deserved it. And whether it was that or the pressure started to get big, and I started to find myself drinking more. My conversation with the great Jerry Cooney, Gentleman Jerry Cooney, coming up in just a matter of minutes. I am also going to share a letter to my disease. Now, this is a short piece written and narrated by the great John Stover, who was a guest on Recovery Coast to Coast many years ago. John passed away in 2014. John was a guy in long-term recovery. He was also the author of The Road Runner and three books in the Love Rescue Me trilogy. Look him up. More than all of this, John Stover was my friend. Now, if you're in recovery, I am certain you will relate to his reading of A Letter to My Disease. That's coming up later in the podcast. I'm Neil Scott, host of Recovery Coast to Coast, with a big virtual hug for you and a humble thank you for listening to our podcast. I know your time's valuable, and I so appreciate you spending some of your time listening to our podcast. Our website is recoverycoasttocoast.org. And following 17 years of nightly broadcasting on iHeartRadio in Seattle, our podcast features interviews with everyday people in recovery, as well as clinicians and authors and recovering celebrities who offer the promise of hope and the reality of recovery, plus well-vetted resources for individuals, families, and friends. We invite you to enjoy it and to share it with your friends as well. Recovery is... An American way of life. Our email address, Recovery Coast to Coast at Comcast.net. We'd love to hear from you. Recovery Coast to Coast supported by Sundown M Ranch, one of America's oldest, least expensive, and most successful treatment programs. You know, September is National Recovery Month, and it's a time to reflect on the gift of recovery and to double down on stopping the cycle of addiction in those you love. Sundown M Ranch has been helping individuals and families find recovery and maintain recovery for over 55 years. Now, their motto is, the patient is the reason we are here. And it's been proven time and time again for decades. Hundreds of thousands of individuals and families have found their way into a lifetime of positive change. Sundown has three main programs. They have an adult program a separate, specialized, nationally acclaimed adolescent program, and a successful outpatient program as well. Every individual is different. They know that. You know that. And the needs of an individual, well, they are taken into consideration. The staff at Sundown takes all of this into consideration when designing a personal treatment plan. 
And when inpatient treatment is complete, Sundown provides the tools necessary to live a life in long-term recovery. They pay close attention to recovery enhancement, helping folks to be better today than they were yesterday, one day at a time. Their treatment is abstinence-based and 12-step centered and is covered by most major insurance plans. And if money is an issue, by golly, they can work to try to find a way to make it work. If you're in recovery, specifically if you're one of the thousands whose life has been changed for the good at Sundown M Ranch, take a moment and let the gratitude sink in. And listeners, if you want what they have and you or someone you know or love has a problem with alcohol or any other drug, contact the Compassionate Recovery Team at sundown.org. Check out the website. Again, it's sundown.org. It's where recovery begins. All right, pour myself a little cup here. Time to sit down and enjoy a quick cup of coffee and listen to my conversation with a real champion, former heavyweight boxer Jerry Cooney, who fought well over 30 heavyweight bouts against the top names in the fight game. The likes of Ken Norton, Larry Holmes, Michael Spinks, and George Foreman. Here is my chat with the former boxer, Gentleman Jerry Cooney. Welcome back once again to Recovery Coast to Coast. Great to have you with us tonight. I'm Neil Scott, the program on the air every night, Monday through Friday, 10 until midnight, always talking about addiction, always with a focus on recovery. Tonight, we take Recovery Coast to Coast back to New Jersey. We catch up with a guy who was uh, one of the great heavyweight fighters of all time. He was at the top of his game, and at the same time, he was fighting alcoholism. In his career, he was 28 wins and three losses. He had a great knockout punch, but in the end, it was alcohol that knocked out Jerry Cooney, brought him to his knees, but he found recovery. He got up off the canvas and is now in long-term recovery. Jerry Cooney joins us from his home in New Jersey. Welcome to the program, Jerry. How are you? Hey, you know what? It's great to be on. It's great to be alive and uh, and living well and uh, being grateful every day. Jerry, let's go back to the beginning for you growing up uh, as a child. When when did the drinking start, and when did it get out of control? Well, you know, it's, it's funny, but you know, I grew up in an alcoholic family. My father was an alcoholic. My mother didn't drink, and I swore I was never going to be like him. And unfortunately, you know, um, dysfunction breeds dysfunction, and and at the early age of, you know, 13 years old, I picked up Boone's Farm Apple Wine. And uh, I liked what it did to me for the 15 to 20 minutes. I felt like that, that big hole that was in my chest went away. And I felt funny, attractive, and, you know, uh, I fit in. You know what I mean? And, and for the next, uh, you know, 15 or 17 years, I drank of that. It worked for you for a while. It was your friend. Well, it sure did. I mean, it was, it was my friend all the way up to the end until you know, it really stopped working for me. What happened at the end, and where where were you career-wise when uh, when you hit your bottom? Well, you, you know, it's really funny, but in 1981, I fought a guy by the name of Kenny Norton in Madison Square Garden, sure. and I knocked him out in 54 seconds in the first round, and that night was the first time I thought I had arrived, and I felt like I deserved it. And whether it was that or the pressure started to get big, and I started to find myself drinking more. And then from that night, May 11th, I don't fight for the heavyweight championship until June 11th, 1982. So it was like a 13-month layoff. And, you know, anybody you talk to, if you're, you know, in the National League pitcher and you don't pitch for 13 months and they put you in the third game of the World Series, you're not going to be that sharp. But at the time, that was, those were the cards that were dealt to me, and I made the best of them. But the problem was I waited so long in between fights and everybody wanted me to win that fight, or most everybody. And you know, I got I drifted away. And I, uh, I, I mean, how many days can you say, you know, I gotta get up and run tomorrow morning? And so you stay up and you uh, don't get up and run the next morning. And little did I know, that's the end of my career after that Norton fight because uh, I went on a run for the next uh, couple of years that uh, you know I, I regret. Go, going back to the bottom, how did you wind up getting into recovery? Did you go to treatment? Well, you know, I had I had uh, had some family members I helped out get into recovery, and uh, you know, I I didn't think I had a problem, and you know how how that goes. And sure. And one day I, I had this beautiful home out in the Hamptons, and I woke up one day at eleven o'clock in the morning, and I thought to myself, Wow, what happened? What happened to me? That was nineteen eighty-seven, 
uh, you know, June, July, or August. So, and I thought I, I got scared a little bit. I said, you know, I'm going to quit. I quit this year. You know, I'm going to give this up and get my life back on track. The next morning, I woke up the same way. And for the first time in my life, I really got scared. You know, and I kind of reached out and cried out to God. I said, God, you know, you got to help me here. But it wasn't one of those foxhole get me out of this one, God. This is the real deal, you know. And I turned on the television, and there was a program on a weekly. Uh, that week was Alcohol Awareness Week. And there was a place, um, the Seafield Center, which is out in uh, West Hampton Beach. A good friend of mine today, George uh, Benedict. And I, I heard him talking on, about alcohol addiction. I remembered the number, 288-1122. I called it. I met with them. And they told me I could have a problem. I don't have to stay in a, in a, in a, in a rehab to go to meetings outside. If I, call, if I can't make it, I can always come back. So I went to two or three meetings a day for, for three or four months. And then I remember this girl telling me, you better be careful when you get four or five months, you're going to think you're all better. And I thought, not me. Mm. Five months, I met this girl, started going late, leaving early, and went back out and drank again for two months, you know, um, of the worst drinking I had ever done. And um, ran into a guy who had three years sober who I used to hang around with, told me I didn't have to drink anymore. That was April 1988. And you found your way back into the rooms. Found my way back into the rooms and worked the program, worked the steps, asked for help, reached out my hand, and uh, and life has um, you know changed quite a bit since then. What is recovery like for you today, Jerry? Well, you know, I think it's a it, program is a, is a, a service for me. You know, I, I mean, I need to go to meetings. I need to help others. Um, you know, part of the problem I, I had as a fighter. I didn't realize I was so sick, and I, I made a, I made a lot of mistakes, and you know, a lot of people were rooting for me that night, but I, little did they know I was out drinking and not taking care of myself, and so I kind of, in a way, for me, I kind of make amends by helping other people. I probably do forty or fifty charities every year and uh, um, help the less fortunate, and and I live life large. I mean, I have a great family, never see me drinking, great wife, and. I'm, I'm busy as I want to be, play a lot of golf, and, uh, and uh, that's pretty much what my life consists of. Jerry, in, in terms of giving back to the community, you started an organization called FIST, Fighters yes. Initiative for Support and Training. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, that, that's a great organization. What we do is we help fighters and their families you know, turn the page. I mean, much like alcohol and drug addiction, we have to, you know, we, we all get knocked down, right? We have to get up, dust off our pants, uh, dust off our pants, and turn the page. And that's basically, I got all this from uh, Alcoholics Anonymous mm. and, and, and staying sober and one day at a time and helping the guy get to the next place is going to help him feel safe and to move on with his family and to have a good life like we all deserve. And, and this is for, uh, for people who are in the fight game. Fighters and their families, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. What, what about family relationships now for you and, and perhaps some of the friends that, that you drank with? W what do they see when they look at Jerry Cooney today? Well, well you know, I don't live in, out there that much anymore. I made a lot of amends, and mm. I, I, I still contact uh, people from my past. We have a nice time when we're together. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just a different person. You know, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm uh, um, I try, you know, I have, a, I have this great wife, and I think about her and my two young kids, and she's selfless around them. Mm. Now, for me as an alcoholic, I don't know what self, I know what selfish is. Yeah. And so I'm learning. It's a, day, it's a work in progress all the time. I'm trying to change, and and that's my, you know, being closer to my higher power, uh, asking forgiveness, and to change and for help. What What is your message out there for, especially young people? who are maybe just experimenting, maybe they're on the path to addiction. What do you say to them? Well, you know, if, if you are missing work, if you're missing school, you know, try the rooms for 90 days. Go into the room, see if you can put it down for 90 days. If you can, then it's great. If maybe you have to go out and practice and see if maybe you think you're okay. But if you're having trouble, come in the rooms, you know, turn your life around and, and, and find a purpose in your life and what you really want to do with your life instead of existing and waiting and putting things off. I mean, that was my thing. I, I, I put off, and I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. You know the old story. Mm -hmm. Next year we didn't do anything. 
you are a fighter, and certainly recovery is a fight. You bet it's a fight, and it's a great fight. When we uh, come in the rooms and work out through the steps uh, the, the problems of our past and to turn the page and to get on and to live a productive, happy, healthy life. Jerry, I wish you continued success one day at a time. You're a man. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that conversation with Jerry Cooney. And by the way, I want to remind listeners of this podcast, if you would like to tell your story of recovery, regardless of the path you've chosen, and as long as you've been in continuous recovery for a year or more, drop us a note at recoverycoasttocoast at comcast.net. You know, a number of years ago, I became friends with a man named John Stover, a wonderful, grateful man in long-term recovery. He was a guest on Recovery Coast to Coast a number of times. He's no longer with us, unfortunately. But he shared a letter that he wrote to his disease. And I've been thinking a lot about John recently and decided to share his letter with you. Take a listen. Dear disease, it's been a while since we've talked, and I must tell you, I don't miss you. When we were together, I really thought I was in love with you. I couldn't go 10 minutes without thinking about you. You were all I thought about, night and day, rain or shine, hell or high water. I never thought I would be able to survive without you. Wherever I went, you came along. Whoever I was with, you were there too. You were a part of me like an arm or a leg. Looking back, I guess it wasn't all bad. We had our fun, didn't we? In the beginning, I, I think we were happy. It seems you weren't always at my side, 24 hours a day like you were in the end. Remember that time at my sister's wedding? Sure, that was fun until I got sick and passed out in the flower bed. But we did dance. At least I think we danced. And What was that girl's name, the bridesmaid? She was fun, wasn't she? Can you believe my sister is still mad at me for that day? Go figure. But then you changed. You began to make more demands of me. You wanted more of me, all of me. You made me sick made me angry. You took my friends away. Until, in the end, we were alone. Just you and me. And who was it that went to jail all those times? Me, that's who. And where were you? Sure, you came around in the mornings just to remind me you were still there. Let's get some more, you would whisper. Let's get some more. You'll feel better. It'll be like the old days. But you lied. It wasn't better. It wasn't like the old days. It would never be like the old days again. But I let you go. I said goodbye. Sure, I missed you at first. I thought about you all the time. For a long while, you could be heard in the back of my head, whispering, pleading, and begging. But you weren't screaming, and you weren't winning. Now, for the first time in a long time, I am in control. I hardly think about you anymore. Sometimes briefly, but it passes. These days when you speak to me, I consider it a death threat. You are no longer the terrorist of my mind, and I am no longer your victim. I have learned to fight back. Today I have weapons to fight you. Meetings of my arsenal, the 12 steps, my bullets. You are not welcome here. You are not tolerated here. I don't need you anymore. I am learning to live without you. I no longer love you, so this is goodbye. Your former lover, John. That was my dearly departed friend, John Stover, an author, a guy in long-term recovery, who shared his letter to his disease with our audience a number of years ago, and I thought it was appropriate in this podcast to share it with you again. Coming up next, actress Allie McGraw is going to share some thoughts on self-pity in just 30 seconds. Are you afraid? Afraid of life without drugs and alcohol? There is help and hope at Sundown M Ranch. At Sundown, the focus is on you and your disease. You will learn how to live without depending on drugs and alcohol. Sundown M Ranch is nationally recognized for effective and affordable alcohol and drug treatment programs. Reclaim your life. Replace your fears with hope.
go to www.sundown.org right now to learn more. And now, as promised, here is Ali McGraw, an award-winning actress and a woman in long-term recovery. We've come to realize that all character defects, to one degree or another, mirror self-centeredness. Self-pity in particular reflects such a glaring preoccupation with self that it all but blinds us to the larger world. In the past, when we were full of self-pity, we were so involved with our own suffering that we weren't aware of much else. It was difficult for us to show interest in other people, to be genuinely concerned about them and the events in their lives. Because of our limited perspective, we didn't have the opportunity to learn about and practice spiritual principles, to be kind, patient, thoughtful, compassionate, and giving. By focusing single-mindedly on our personal trials and tribulations, we lost sight of the broad horizons and changing vistas of God's world. For years, we missed the majesty of His works. We may have seen but never truly appreciated the colors and harmonies of nature, the cycles and seasons of life, the miracles of faith. Now that we are trying to replace self-pity with gratitude and self-centeredness with service to others, we have the chance to live an expansive and very special life, a spiritual life. Thought for today. Am I as concerned about others as I am about myself? Well, that wraps up this edition of Recovery Coast to Coast, the national podcast. If you've enjoyed our podcast, and I certainly hope that you have, please share it with others via social media or simply by telling someone that you know about it. You can find all of our podcasts at recoverycoasttocoast.org. And if you'd like to get in touch, our email is recoverycoasttocoast at comcast.net. Also, please hit the subscribe or follow button. It's free, and you'll be notified the next time we publish a podcast. Remember, if you know someone who's experiencing problems with alcohol or any other drug, here's a 24-hour national helpline. It offers free information and confidential treatment referrals. Spanish-speaking individuals are available as well. Here's the number, 1-800-622-HELP. And we encourage you to check out findsupport.gov. Now, this is a fairly new website designed for individuals, families, and friends, including how to pay for treatment, including low-cost and, in some cases, free treatment options. Find health care support. Find out how to help someone else or find out how to get help for yourself. It's all in one place at findsupport.gov. And join us next time for America's Voice for Recovery, Recovery Coast to Coast, the national podcast. And another shout out to our sponsoring organization, Sundown M Ranch, where recovery begins, sundown.org. I'm Neil Scott reminding you to stay healthy, live in gratitude, and be kind to others. Remember, The bright side of addiction is recovery. Pass it on.